the feud between Jimbo Fisher and Nick Saban lived up to the hype in terms of a close game that came down to the wire. But no more microphone fireworks this time. There was uh, so much to dissect from this game. We got no Bryce Young, four turnovers, and two missed field goals for the Tide. But nobody's talking about that. It's the joy of football. Two teams can play 59 minutes and 57 seconds. But all we want to talk about is what happened in the final three ticks. So here's the scene. Aggies down four. Need a touchdown here. First and goal from the two. Haynes King looks to Evan Stewart. Play fails. Game over. That prompted Johnny Football to tweet this, quote, one of the worst calls I've ever seen in my life. You have, you have one play to beat the number one team in the country, and that's what we run? Now, clearly, guys, this is an emotional and hyperbolic response from a notable Aggie alum, but Blake, do you agree with his sentiment that it was the wrong play call there? Well, I mean, it really wasn't a, a bad play call. It just wasn't executed correctly. Uh, Evan Stewart's got to get into the end zone and, and, and give the quarterback uh, a little bit of room to throw the, the football. I mean, I think if Evan Stewart had more experience, uh, then, then, I, then it would have been probably a, a, a better option for them. Uh, but he's a freshman. He's never been on this stage before. Uh, the, you know, this is a different moment than it is in high school football. So you got to get a few yards into the end zone, preferably three or four. And then the ball's got to be out on time where you have a chance. I mean, the ball was thrown in front of the, uh, the pylon. Uh, so that there was really no chance for the, for the play to actually happen. So he's got to get deeper. The quarterback's got to throw it earlier. Uh, if it had been me, I would have let uh, Devon A. Chain get to the field, uh, maybe maybe get him uh, on, on some sort of a stretch play or a swing screen uh, where he's one on one, where he's got receivers blocking for him. But uh, I just think that it's more of an execution problem than a play call. Carl, if Evan Stewart doesn't have the experience in a big game like this, should you design a play that targets him? Well, I think that you design and play based on what you think gives you the shot to win. When I think about what Johnny Football said, it would be easy to do a lot of different things if Johnny Manziel was actually playing quarterback for Texas A&M Saturday, but he was not. I think that when you're talking about the game that Evan Stewart had, I don't have a problem with him throwing to him. I think it was poor execution, but I think a lot of people were looking for him to maybe do something run pass option wise, giving the quarterback a dual read. But at the end of the day, they're going to question you when you lose. That's the belly of the beast. That's the nature of this business. If he wins this game, it's like, oh my God, I beat Nick again. And Texas A&M is here as a real contender. Now it goes down to another head scratching loss and the questions will come again and the noise will get louder. Does Jimbo Fisher need an offensive coordinator that can call plays in situations like that? It's winning and losing. It's a game of inches, and it's a very thin line between a win and a loss. Yeah, Carl, you said it. That play, among a lot of other things that happened during the game, was really the difference between winning and losing. But what implications did it have kind of big picture when it comes to Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M, who are kind of in a rocky relationship right now? You're in a rocky relationship, but it's nothing that you can do with a $95 million buyout. So you got to try to find a way to make it work. And so I think that question comes again. Does Jimbo need an offensive coordinator? But if he does, who makes that decision? Do you make him do that? If you're the Texas Tech, if I'm Texas A&M administrators, do you make him do that? Does he make that decision for himself? Who's going to be the person that ultimately makes that decision? That hasn't. That is unknown at this point. Yeah, Blake, you said it last week that it's a necessity. they got to get an offensive coordinator, new vision in there, something that's not going to be solved necessarily this season. But based on what you saw Saturday, was that vision and what you believed solidified? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Jimbo Fisher wears a lot of hats as a head coach, like every head coach does. Mm -hmm. and, and you need to be able to hire someone that you trust that can run uh, a, a system that, that one, kids are going to want to play in. They want to score points. They want to be in the limelight. They want to have a chance to succeed, uh, put them in a position for success. Uh, their offense right now is not doing that unless you're a running back. Uh, and so they, they've got they've got to kind of start over offensively. Their defense is fine. They're young. Uh, they have a lot of talent on their roster. They're going to have to keep it after the season, uh, depending on how, how the rest of this season goes. But 
Uh, they need a new vision, in my opinion. Uh, Jimbo Fisher will hear that from the athletic director. He does have a lot of, of uh, 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 power with the money that he makes, but I think uh, if he's a realist and he's a person that looks himself in the mirror, uh, then I think he'll realize that that needs to be done. All right, so we need to tell Johnny Football to just take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. <laughs> 